salt satyagraha the salt satyagraha was also known as the salt march dandi march and dandi satyagraha it was an act of uh, non violent civil disobedience in colonial india led by mahatma gandhi the 24th day march to the march which began on 24th march lasted from 12 3 to 5th april 1930 as a direct action campaign of uh, the resistance and a non violent pro- protest against the british salt monopoly one major reason for salt march was that the civil disobedience movement needed a strong inauguration that would inspire more indians to follow mr gandhi mr gandhi had started this movement with 78 of his trusted volunteers the march spanned 240 miles 390 kilometers from sabarmati ashram to dandi which was called navsarai then which is in gujarat state now large number of indians joined mr gandhi along the way when gandhi broke the british british raj salt loss at 8:30 am on 6/4 1930 it had sparked large scale acts of civil obedience disobedience against salt loss by millions of indians after processing the salt by evaporation at dandi mr gandhi continued his southward journey along the coast making salt and addressing meetings on the way all along meeting ordinary folks was the main failure feature of mr gandhi's campaign the congress party had planned to stage a satyagraha at the darasana salt works situated 40 kilometers south of dandi mr gandhi was arrested on the midnight of 4th may 1930 just days before the planned action at darasana mahatma gandhi had wanted the strictest discipline and therefore he had chosen only members of his ashram he wanted to adhere to satyagraha and ahimsa at any cost he chose his ashram mates over party men as they were well trained in gandhi's strict standards of discipline the 24 day march was to pass through the districts and 48 villages all events were scheduled before hand published in indian and foreign press before hand mr gandhi wrote a letter with an offer to stop the march if the demands including reduction of land revenue assessment spending imposing a ta- tax on foreign clothes and abolishing salt tax his strongest appeal to irwin was on salt tax irwin was just dismissive of gandhi's letter and salt satyagraha he never thought that it was a threat at all on 12th march 1930 mr gandhi and 78 of his ashram mates set out on foot for the coastal village of dandi gujarat 388 kilometers away from that starting point hat sabarmati ashram it consisted of men belonging to every caste religion and creed the salt march was also called the white flowing river because all those joining the procession wore white kadi almost 1 lakh people crowded the road to uh, that separated sabarmati and ahmedabad each day thousands had joined the um, procession till it reached 3 kilometers long the dandi march and the darasana satyagraha had drawn worldwide attention to the indian independence movement um, through extensive newspaper and newsreel coverage the satyagraha against the salt tax continued for almost a year ending with gandhi's release from jail and negotiations with viceroy lord irwin at a second round table conference more than 60000 indians were jailed as a result of satyagraha 
the Raj did not yield any concession at all. The Salt Satyagraha campaign was based on Gandhi's principles of non-violent protest called Satyagraha, which meant, which meant true force. Literally, it, it is formed from the words Satya meaning truth and Graha meaning insistence. In the early 1930s, the Indian National Congress had chosen Satyagraha as their main tactic for winning India's sovereignty and self-rule from British rule and authorized Mr. Gandhi to prepare the campaign, organize the campaign. Mr. Gandhi had chosen the 1882 British Salt Law to as the first target of Satyagraha, the Salt March to Dandi and the beating by British force of hundreds of non-violent protesters in Dharasana had received worldwide news coverage and caused worldwide revulsion against the British. The Salt Satyagraha had demonstrated the effects of effective use of civil disobedience as a technique for fighting civil and political injustice. Mr. Gandhi's teachings of Satyagraha had great effect on the latter-day social reformers like Martin Luther King, James Belwell and others during the civil rights movement. The Salt March was the most significant organized challenge to British authority since the 1920-22 non-cooperation movement. This followed the Purna Swaraj declaration of sovereignty and self-rule by the Indian National Congress on 26 January 1930. It gained worldwide attention which gave impetus to the Indian independence movement and started the nation, national civil disobedience movement which continued till 1934. At midnight on 31st December 1929, the Indian National Congress raised the tricolor flag of India on the banks of Ravi River at Lahore. The Indian National Congress, led by Gandhi and Jawaharlal Nehru, had publicly issued the Declaration of Sovereignty and Self-Rule or Purna Swaraj on 26 January 1930. Purna Swaraj in Sanskrit literally meant Purna, complete, self, swa, self, raj, rule. It was therefore complete self-rule. The declaration included readiness to be with withhold taxes. The Congress Working Committee had entrusted the responsibility of organizing the first act of civil disobedience. Uh, to Congress was ready to take, take, uh, take after Gandhi's expected arrest.